numbers. Everybody knows that you're selling heroin out in this house. Um, I even recently found that you have killed people. And this guy's really nice to me. I mean, he's a very nice person. Hold on, Brian. We got <laughs> okay. we got to back up. We got to back the okay. truck up a little bit, brother. Right. Now, when you say he, you found out that he killed people. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to another episode of the Tenants from Hell show here on Holton Wise TV. I am your host, James Wise. Behind the scenes, my man Tommy cutting up the footage. Today's show is another barn burner. We brought uh, Brandon from Investment Joy, super popular YouTube channel. So if you guys are one of the few out there who haven't heard about Investment Joy and the stuff that Brandon is doing, I put a link to his channel in the show notes. That guy has got a hella, hella, hella crazy stories, man. His stories are possibly the only stories on the internet that might be crazier than ours. And I sat down with him and talked to him again uh, about another wild story. He was trying to evict a heroin dealer from one of his properties, and this guy brought in a record number of witnesses in an attempt to uh, discredit Brandon. As a matter of fact, it was 13 witnesses. Let's take a look at the footage now. All right, so Brandon, we had you on here last time talking about that meth lab, and you and I had spoke about possibly talking again and talking some more, and uh, <laughs> you actually dealt with another eviction we wanted to talk about where – uh, you actually had the tenant. He fought you like crazy in the in the courtroom, and he actually brought in thirteen witnesses. That's the meth lab was another thing I had never seen in my business, and uh, I've I've dealt with some pretty pretty crazy evictions where the tenant tries yeah. to fight us, but I, we've never had somebody go as far as to bring in thirteen people. What in the hell happened? Okay, so I bought a house, and it had the history of being one of the worst drug houses in my region in my area. Um, so this, this, uh, I bought this place and I actually, if anybody wants to, they can go, here's my channel plug. They can go on my, uh, channel and watch a video about how I did a lease option. This elderly gentleman, um, he, he wanted to get rid of a rental property. I didn't want to give him a penny for it. And I said, let me take it over, over on a lease option. So I got it for practically nothing, um, to acquire, take over, um, control of the property. Um, I started finding out somewhat quick that <coughs> the rumors in the neighborhood were true. And this guy was selling a phenomenal amount of drugs out of the place. And um, he, um, I, I sat down and I said, look, look, sir, here's the problem. I've talked to your neighbors. Everybody knows that you're selling heroin out of this house. Um, I even recently found that you have killed people. And this guy's really nice to me. I mean, he's a very nice person. And I think that's kind of why he was in the position he was in. Well, all right, hold on, hold on, Brian. We got okay. <laughs> we got to back up. We got to back the okay. truck up a little bit, brother. Right. Now, when you say he, you found out that he killed people, uh, you're going to have okay. to elaborate okay. on let's, that. Let's back the, the train up there. Um, he's a very prolific heroin dealer, and every so often he was selling batches of fentanyl which is the heavy duty stuff. And um, there were two dead bodies in two different time periods recovered in this yard. All right, let's continue now. Now that we okay. got that out there. Okay, all right. So, um, so I had this conversation, I said, look, and the weird thing was, and I have a background in search engine optimization, media, stuff like that, that they had found two bodies in his yard. There were no police reports found on that property whatsoever, but through my Google, ninja skills, I found out that that had happened. I said, look, you're selling dope to these people. I know that from your perspective, it's a free country. Um, and I agree with you in a point, what somebody puts in their own body is their own dang issue. But I said, you're encouraging people to kill themselves with this, this garbage and stuff. And I said, it's costing people money. It's costing me money. You're bringing bad players to the neighborhood. You're killing people. And I need you out of here. I want to fix this place up. There is going to be, there is no good human being that's going to ever want to be your neighbor. I won't find a good tenant to rent to. You're not a good tenant yourself. I said, look, you need to leave. So we started having this back and forth thing. And he said, well, this place is a piece of garbage. And I said, I agree with you. The quality of this rental is substandard. It is below what I would want to rent to somebody. So 
typically I have a process, uh, sir, and that process is for me to bring in my maintenance people and it's to fix your house. But you refuse entry to your property every single time that happens because we both know you're dealing drugs out of here. So I can't make the repairs that you've requested to this property because you refuse entry. And to be honest with you, I don't want my people in here anyway because they'll get shot, they'll trip on a needle, they'll, uh, you know, something nefarious is going to happen to my work crew and I really like my work crew. I've got wonderful people, wonderful contractors that I've had relationships with for a very long time. And I said, look, it doesn't do me anybody, it doesn't do anybody a favor. Yes, I wanna fix the property. No, I, I cannot fix it in this scenario right now. So he started going in and um, long story short, he disconnected the main sewer line under the house and it filled the uh, little cellar up with solid waste. And he went to me and he says, this property is not fit for human habitation. And I said, I agree with you 100%. You should be out immediately. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you know this. It's a little thing in Ohio Revised Code. There is such a thing as a health, ev health department eviction. That is a non-judicial form of eviction within most municipalities in the state of Ohio when the condition of the property is substandard. And he, after kicking the, uh, the sewage pipe out, he said, you've got to fix it. I want you to spend money on my place, blah, 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 blah. And I said, sir, listen to me. You and I both have had this conversation about your, your dealings here. It's unsafe for human habitation. I said, you know, he, he said, I didn't cause this problem. I said, yes, you did. Um, I said, but I can't prove that you kicked the pipe out. But we've, you know, the city of the, this municipality has done us a great favor and they posted a condemnation order on this rental. You have 24 hours to get out of this property, sir. And I said, you know, just well as I do, the sheriff can escort you out of here because it's no longer safe for human hab habitation. And I have never seen a property get fixed from a sewage leak that quickly. <laughs> I don't know how he did it, but it was like a whirlwind like that. The health department removes the condemnation order. So, so the tenant, he, he got it fixed himself without you. Yes, he did. His, his dime and everything, huh? Oh yes. Okay. Okay. And I said, Oh, I said, this is very interesting, but I said, I'm still going to evict you. So I went through the no fault eviction. Um, 30 day notice on the door plus a three day. Um, my, I had one local lawyer, they would not pick it up because I had procured the property on a master lease with an option. She said, those, those aren't a thing in the state of Ohio, Brandon. So I had to go out and get a different attorney. This was, it took probably from the time I posted the door notice to the time I actually had my lawyer file the paperwork, it was probably 60 days. So double what the 30 day notice was. Um, the individual there had gone back in the cellar and had rebroken the pipe, the sewage. So um, the eviction case rolls around and I show up to, to the municipal court and those bailiffs, I, I, you know, it's a state of Ohio thing where anymore you have to go through the, um, the body scanner. You put everything that you own in the little, the little dish and they run it through the, um, the scanner the x-ray machine and you walk and you flip around and all that stuff. And I'm sitting there doing that. And those bailiffs are freaked out. And you know, there, there's two armed bailiffs there. And I'm like, you guys are uh, really treating me weird. I said, what's going on? And they said, are you here for the so-and-so eviction? I said, Oh crap. <laughs> I said, yeah, I am. I said, what's going on? And he said, your guy brought in 13 witnesses against you. Rent Tech Direct provides you with an easy to use yet robust platform for managing your properties, complete with its built-in reporting and accounting system that can be customized to fit your business. You can manage work orders and even accept them online from your tenants. You can also share work order details with tenants or owners if you wish. With Rent Tech Direct, you will also fill your vacancies faster than ever with the built-in marketing tools. Just enter the details of your property and Rent Tech will automatically provide you with a professional online website as well as syndicate them to popular websites such as Zillow, Trulia, and Apartments.com to get your listing maximum exposure so it's rented fast. And I said, really? 
And he said, we don't have enough room in the little hallway for the magistrate to, um, to seat you. There's not enough room here. And I said, holy crap. And um, I, I go down the hallway and there my uh, attorney, he's been, he's a wonderful, I've got a wonderful attorney now. Let me get that straight. Let me get that clear. I have, good, I have a good attorney team now. And um, I'm sitting there. I said, what's going on? And he said, Brandon, in my 30 years of being an attorney, I've never seen this before. You have 13 witnesses in an eviction case. And um, this magistrate here in our county is very, known as being very tough against landlords. Very tough. I thought, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, what on earth can he get me on? My, um, my attorney's like, she, he's like, you did the 30 day eviction. I don't know what you can get on. And we're sitting down and there's this, um, there's this, uh, the, the magistrate comes in and, you know, there, there's a, um, I don't know, um, a court lady that's there and she sits down and reads the cases off and she's like doing this, come over here, come over here. I need to talk to you right now. And the magistrate goes over to the corner there with this lady and he says, Mr. Brandon has 13 witnesses against him, plus the, the defendant. And the magistrate looks at me and looks at him, and they said, she said, are they named in the case? And the, the, the lady's like, well, it says all other, all other occupants. Because I name, I say, you know, the tenant on file and all other occupants. And the, the lady there says, he named all other occupants. And so the magistrate says, Mr. So-and-so, who was the defendant, you have 14 people living in that little house? And he says, no, they're witnesses. Show it. This guy's a slumlord. And she said, are they occupants? Yes or no, Mr. So-and-so? He said, no. And she said, get them out of the court. Right? She said, kick them out of the courthouse right now. And so these bailiffs go, and they, they remove 13 people, and the bailiff comes back and says, Good job, magistrate. He was paying them. <laughs> and he said, yeah, he's going to give $5 a piece to each person that showed up to complain about the rental. And so this guy is mad as can be right off the bat. And I said, and the magistrate said, okay, so what's the problem? Mr. Brandon has filed for a 30-day eviction, he, simple lease termination. This is not a payment issue, Mr. So Mr. Defendant. Um, what's your issue? And he's like, Brandon is a slumlord. We've got, you know, he rebroke the pipe in the basement. There is sewage in the basement. And the magistrate said, okay, so why are you living there? And he said, well, because I have to. And he said, how long have you had since Mr. Brandon posted the, the door notice? And he said, well, he, you know, they read off the picture that I posted the door notice and he had confirmed to the magistrate that he had received it. It's not like he was playing the game of, Oh, I never saw the 30 day notice. It's two months ago. Or no, no. By this point, it's two and a half months, almost three months of for two months to, for my, to get a good attorney to file the case another uh, three weeks. So we're at almost three months. And she said, you've Mr. So-and-so you've had three months to get out of this house that you claim is uninhabitable. And she said, has Mr. Have you paid Mr. So-and-so his rent? And, or Mr. Brandon, have you paid your landlord, Mr. Brandon, his rent so far? And he said, no. She said, Could you, are you capable of paying it right now? And he said, oh, yeah, I've got three grand in my pocket for, for Brandon if he wants it. And she said, well, it sounds like to me you need to go find another landlord in case, you know, I, I rule in favor of uh, the plaintiff, Brandon. Um, please proceed to um, a writ to get his place back. And I mean, that whole case lasted five minutes, if that. And my attorney and I are sitting there thinking, what on earth has happened here? <laughs> we had more witnesses against me than any case in the county ever. And this whole thing lasted five minutes against, with involving the magistrate that everybody says is an awful magistrate against landlords. And I thought, huh, <laughs> you know, this is, this is weird. So I asked my attorney, I'm like, can I just hang around in the courtroom for another 30 minutes or so? You know, um, I don't want to get jumped by these 13 people as I exit because um, they'll find out that he lied to them about being paid. And, you know, I, I hang around the courtroom for a while. I go get my writ. 
uh, bailiff shows up. He has completely cleaned the place out. We spend eight thousand dollars fixing the place, and now, in my opinion, it's, it's a gorgeous little rental. This all all went through, you know, a year ago. I took over the tenant from another landlord. I would say at this point, um, seventy to eighty percent of my evictions are from landlord takeovers. They're not tenants that I have installed. On the last video, um, our last segment about the meth lab, that was a tenant that I have installed. I, I checked and 70, 80% of my tenants that I evict are from tenant takeovers. They're not ones that I've placed. So um, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. All right. Great stuff out of Brandon from Investment Joy again. Guys, I can't say this enough. If you want to follow uh, Brandon's story, I put a link in the show notes below to his channel, Investment Joy. That dude has got some wild stories. He's down there in the southern Ohio area. So what I want you to do at the end of this show, if you're interested in southern Ohio, I want you to pay attention because we are running a commercial for a turnkey operator that is working in two markets in southern Ohio. They're working in Cincinnati and Dayton, and their name is U.S. Reeb. So stay tuned for their commercial to see all the opportunities those guys have out there in southern Ohio. As far as tenants from Hell Stories, if you're watching this out there, you got questions about property management, or you're a landlord, you're and you've dealt with some wild stories that you've seen me talk about or you saw Brandon talk about or any of our other guests on the Tennis from Hell show, I want you to drop those in the comments below. If your story is wild enough, we can have you on your own episode and talk about your story. As always, I'm James Wise from Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. U.S. Reeb is a full-service turnkey provider offering investors the opportunity to purchase single-family and multifamily investment properties in Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, and Kansas City, Missouri. The purchase process is seamless, from reserving a property to obtaining financing, inspections, and insurance referrals, U.S. Reeb has a dedicated team in place to manage the process from start to finish. In addition, U.S. Reeb is also directly integrated with its own private placement fund for accredited investors. The fund seeks to raise $10 million to capitalize on the repositioning of distressed single-family and multifamily. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from health. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.